with Accounting Fly. Thanks everyone for being on the call today. Um, and we're in day three. The day three is kind of feel like day four of uh, Accounting Fly Meet the Firms Week. Um, today is, is uh, if you're on the morning session, a lot about the big four. Um, the big four hires a third of you every year, roughly. So, um, and it, and it's a it's a it's a section of the job market a lot of accounting students aspire to enter. So, I think you will find that this session is going to be extremely extremely helpful, um, and probably you're going to take away things that you uh, probably would have otherwise never thought about when it comes to approaching the big four. Um, I'm going to introduce our speaker, Andrew Argue, here in just a second. Um, I think we've had a great week so far. I, I, I feel like this is the best week of webinars that we've ever had. And, um, and of course, if you are looking for other content that we're not presenting, take the time and email us. You're also going to be given a survey, a very quick survey at the end of the, at the, end of the presentation where you can tell us. We read, we read every single one of these things. And we, we create blog posts and we create... Um, new webinars for the next Meet the Firms Week and our webinars that will be every week between now and the next Meet the Firms Week will we'll include those topics. So make sure that you um, are letting us know. Secondly, there's there's uh, two more uh, days of webinars. They're on our website at meetthefirmsweek.com. You can register for the for the other webinars. And I'll tell you this, if you're interested in, in, uh, in how to get hired by the big four, you may want to also check out Friday's session about small firms too. Um, I encourage everyone to, to explore all of the career opportunities that are available to you. And um, just like many people um, have, have probably had a bias against small firms, the very small firms, you might be shocked at some of the opportunities that are there. Just like people who feel like they are, they're more industry bound would be shocked at the great opportunities that are available at a big four firm. So thanks again for being here. Um, and, and Accounting Fly is all about the accounting career life cycle, and we hope that you'll build a profile on Accounting Fly and that you'll use it for life. Why should you do it? A couple of reasons. One, you'll be eligible for a monthly drawing of a $500 scholarship. And we announce those. I will email you if you win, and we'll, we'll put it on, on, on our social media. Secondly, for the employers, um, over 1,000 employers use Accounting Fly to recruit students and recent grads. It's um, a wonderful way to get noticed by recruiters, and of course, it is a great way to fill out one application and then apply to lots and lots of jobs. Um, and those jobs are increasing by the by the month here on Accounting Fly. And lastly, it keep, it's it's a way for us to keep in touch with you as we present more accounting career content, whether that's our blog or whether that's the webinars. And you're going to see a lot more webinars over the coming months. So uh, lots of webinars this week, and, and of course the focus on today, is, like I said, is uh, how to get hired by the big four. Um, this is an important one, and, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Before I introduce Andrew, just just two quick things. Um, if you haven't been on one of these sessions, on the right-hand side of this, your screen, you should have the go-to webinar control panel. Um, you can use the question panel to ask questions. I have a feeling that we're going to have a ton of questions today. We already have some. So um, why don't you give this thing a shot? If you haven't already, uh, use the question panel to tell us what college you're attending or if you graduated, what college you graduated from. And uh, Andrew, I'm going to start bringing you in here. I'm, I'm going to tell you some of the schools that are, that are rattling off here. While you're doing that, um, GoToWebinar has a mobile version, and so you guys should be able to view and hear on the mobile version. So as you're typing in these schools, this is how you ask questions. Now that you know how to ask questions, I expect a lot of questions for Mr. Andrew. So Andrew, uh, real quick, I'm going to roll through this. University of New Mexico, University of Minnesota, Georgia Regents, Liberty University, University of Missouri, Kansas City, Eastern Washington, Bellevue University, Southern Mississippi Gulf Coast, um, DePaul, St. Mary, Suffolk, Marshall, Delaware, Northwood, Walla Walla University, Florida International, University of Florida, down by you, Andrew. Um, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, Davenport, DePaul, Cal Poly, uh, Keller, Coastal, um, Texas Women's University, University of Illinois, um, St. Xavier, Shorter, Pittsburgh. Oh, man, there's too many to even get. I, I get overwhelmed every time. UMass Dartmouth, UCLA, Fairfield, UTD. Um, gosh, thanks, guys, for doing this. It, I, this is a blast to read off all the different colleges that are represented on the call today. So this is a lot of fun. Really appreciate you guys doing that. 
Right. So um, on to today. This is going to be exciting. Um, I have known Andrew Argue now for a little over uh, well, almost two years now, right? Um, yep. So Andrew is, is uh, among other things, many other things, an expert in the career spectrum. He is a, is a good friend to Accounting Fly and to our community, especially the students. Andrew um, knows the career spectrum and, and is going to show you that in just a minute, especially when it comes to the big four. He knows, he, he knows these things because he's an accountant, he's a CPA, he has a master's in accounting, and he worked at a big four um, before uh, going out on his own and starting a couple interesting ventures, including the Bean Counter, which is a blog and podcast, which I know Andrew's going to give you access to today. It is awesome. I'm even on one of the podcasts, which is kind of cool. Probably the least interesting one, I would think, Andrew, but, but <laughs> I appreciate, definitely the, not. <laughs> appreciate the publicity. So, Andrew, I'm going to get out of the way. I am so glad that you're here, and this has been a long time in the making, and um, I'm, I'm going to sort of just be on the sideline here and come back with questions and answers because I know we'll have a lot of them. So the floor is yours, man, and, uh, and take it away, and thanks again. Yeah, perfect. Guys, thanks for coming on, guys, gals. Thanks for coming on to this webinar today. I'm super excited. But before we get started, in that little question box, if you guys could just give a huge thanks to Jeff for putting on this event. I don't know if you realize really how much effort coordination that goes on behind the scenes you know we all get here today and do our presentation but it takes a lot of work for, for him and accounting fly so just go ahead and say you know thanks Jeff we appreciate you and uh, thanks Jeff for having me on <laughs> all right so today thanks. we are talking about how to get hired by the big four accounting firms now I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to go over today um, I'm going to talk about me, give you a little bit of background. I'll talk a little bit about the firms. Uh, many of you are obviously familiar with who they are. Uh, they were on the first slide. I'll talk about some strategies that you can use to get hired by the big four. Um, some of the pitfalls, the greatest pitfall that I've seen people fall into, and I'll share some, some personal stories of, of people that I know that have stumbled. Uh, I'm going to talk about your next steps. If I were in your shoes, you know, I know most of you are in university. Uh, Jeff kindly rattled them off. It's incredible that we have people represented from all around the U.S. What should you be doing you know, in the next 24 hours, in the next uh, week, in the next uh, semester? We'll talk about that at the end. And then I'm excited for these questions. Make sure you put as many questions as possible in there. I'll get those at the end. So even if I don't get a chance to answer them today, I'll use that to uh, you know, put some, some good content out on the Bean Counter blog in the coming weeks. So I will for sure get all of those questions answered eventually. So go ahead and throw those in the Q&A box. So I want to start off a little bit about my background. I'm originally from Oklahoma. I don't, I don't think I heard any Oklahoma schools get rattled off in the beginning. Um, you know, if you haven't been to Oklahoma, you're not missing a whole lot. I went ahead and got out of there as soon as I turned 18. But um, I was originally born there, lived all over, spent a couple of years in Costa Rica in a boarding school, and I went to the University of Tampa. And that's really when my whole story starts. Um, when I came to UT and when you start your undergrad, that's really the beginning of your accounting career. You know, yeah, you can take some high school courses, and if you, if you get that opportunity, that's great. But the undergrad is where everything starts to come together. And when I was an undergrad, I, I got a, a PwC summer leadership uh, conference at the time. I think they called it that summer leadership adventure. I also did an internship. And a little bit about my story in accounting. You know, I started at this University of Tampa. It was a very small school. We only had about 4,000, I think even smaller, maybe even 3,500 students when I first started. We had a very small Beta Alpha Psi chapter. Now, for those of you that don't know, that's an accounting society. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And there was only one of the big four firms recruiting at the school. The others didn't even come on campus. And that one big four firm, I remember, it was so, it was so depressing at the time, they only hired one person a semester. And so there was, I think there were probably 25 people in my Beta Alpha Psi chapter. And, um, you know, one person would get this big four offer. And, and as you know, I mean, there's a bunch of people on the webinar today. A lot of people want to work for the big four. So I was determined to make that change and bring in the rest of those firms in the coming years. And we were lucky enough to do that. Deloitte was the firm that recruited there. And over, over time, we ended up getting all of the big four. And I ended up working at PwC. But the way I got my job at PwC, and, and I'll teach you in this podcast, you know, you need to think outside the box. You know, just getting a good GPA isn't going to cut it anymore. It certainly didn't cut it when I was around. I actually snuck into a career fair at another university. My wife went to the University of South Florida. I didn't know her at the time, but um, it's kind of funny that uh, I ended up sneaking into their career fair. They had about 45,000 students, 
every CPA firm and you know our section of the state was there, and so I was like, I got to get in there. So I weaseled my way in, and um, it was great. I ended up getting a lot of interviews from that. The next year, I brought four of my friends and did the same thing, and I think we made a little bit of a ruckus that time because we ended up uh, getting banned for the future. Uh, so, but either way, I would totally recommend that to you. If you're at a small university, you got to do whatever you can. Yeah, you know, you might get a talking to, but getting that career, starting with that, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollar a year salary at a very large, prestigious firm is a great path for a lot of people. You know, as Jeff mentioned, you guys should check out that small firm CPA webinar. Uh, the big four is not uh, for everybody, but it, it worked out well for me. Like I said, worked at the, uh, was at the University of Tampa. I, uh, when I was in my master's degree, I worked at a company called Cock Corporation, and I worked there in the accounting department. And while I was there, I took the CPA exam. I was literally working full time. I was taking 12 hours of a master's class, master's classes, and taking the CPA exam, and I passed it during that time period. So we're going to talk today about getting really involved. You know, if you want to work for the big four, you're going to work a lot of hours. But you can work a whole lot less hours then if you put in some really hard work, energy, and effort now. Um, when I started working at the big four, I sort of felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I didn't have to take the CPA exam anymore. I didn't have to take, you know, class anymore. I only had to focus on my job. And I, I tell everyone to do that, you know, up front. Try and pass the CPA exam. Get, get some work experience, get all your courses done before you start. You're starting fresh, and it can actually be a big weight off your shoulders, and it's not as overwhelming. I was also the Beta Alpha Psi alumni representative, which was a, a national position on the board of directors of Beta Alpha Psi, traveled around to the conferences. Maybe I've seen some of you at them. Um, it was a lot of fun. And then I started full-time with PwC in September 2011, um, and, and it was an incredible experience. I was there for about two years before I was promoted to senior associate. Typically at PwC it takes three years. Um, but I, I didn't want to stop my success in, in college. You know, I went to that small school and PwC didn't even recruit there. I had to sneak into another university. I was really involved in Beta Alpha Psi. And so I didn't want to stop that success then. I wanted to continue that when I started at PwC. And I was able to get promoted a year early to senior associate. I was able to work on a bunch of very interesting clients, a lot of first-year audits for some very interesting companies, and I was really honored to have that experience, which wasn't often given to people that started to work on more risky engagements, more complicated engagements, but I got tons of responsibility in the beginning, and I got these really amazing experiences that, you know, I, I think a lot of the smaller firms down the top 25, top 100, so on and so forth, they give you a lot of great opportunities and experience, but in the big four, you do get some, some different things that you don't often see, and you, you get them very early in your career. For example, in my first years at PwC, before I was even a senior associate, I worked on multiple client proposals, one of which was a Fortune 1000 clothing company. And you guys would know the brand name. I won't say the brand name, but it was this big clothing company. And... Um, you know, what the partner decided to do was he said, you know, we need to win this, this audit, guys. We need to get this thing. How can we do something really unique in the proposal? And I don't remember who it was, but somebody came up and said, you know, why don't we wear their clothes and do a photo shoot, and then we'll put all that in the, in the proposal for the audit, and we'll, we'll try and get this engagement. And so we did just that. And I'm going to share with you the photo that they took of me. This is a little embarrassing. I've honestly never shared this publicly on the internet, and um, I, I just want to—I just want to say up front, I did not choose to make this face. Okay, that the the person there was coaching me. They told me to do it. They told me to make this face. Oh, oh <laughs> goodness! Now that look at that shadow right across the eye. These guys were professionals. Okay, but I'm I, sorry I, to interrupt you, but you look exhausted, Andrew. <laughs> You know, I show I show this because, you know, I, I want to show these are interesting and unique experiences. You know, I didn't expect to be like a part-time model when I was working at PwC, but they went ahead and put the whole engagement team in this photo shoot, and um, they put me in a salmon T-shirt. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. But you can get a lot of unique experiences at the Big Four, and that's what you're here to hear about. And that's what you're learn here to learn about how you can achieve, how to get into the Big Four, and have some of these unique experiences. So like I said, incredible experiences, traveling the world. I went to a couple different countries. Um, I made great money when I was there. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, like, I sh I'm pretty open about my finances. I like talking about it just because I think it's interesting. Uh, I started in 2011 making $49,000 base salary. 
My first year, I got about a 10% raise. My second year, got a 19% raise. So, you know, a lot of times I talk to people, you know, not in accounting related, but just out there in the workforce. And it's, it's tough sometimes, you know, people get 3% raises, 4% raises, you know, keeping up with the rate of inflation. And it was pretty awesome to get some of those early raises. And I was only at PwC for a few years. And Matt, I can't even imagine, you know, if had I stayed, that would have just kept on ticking. You know, you can take your starting salary and multiply it by 10 to 20% so many times and you start to get some big numbers. I also got bonuses when I was there, I think 5 to 7% both each year that I was there. And the cool thing about these big firms is that you get this, this name and you get this career for a lifetime. You know, I didn't spend that much time at PwC. I did well when I was there, but everybody recognizes that name. And again, you know, there's nothing wrong at all with going to some of these smaller firms. For a lot of people, it's the right decision, and it's a better decision for them. And I talk a lot about the other top 25 firms and smaller regional and local accounting firms, but for the big four, one of the unique factors is that people outside the industry, outside of accounting, really know that name. And it'll help you even if you choose not to do accounting in the long run or even if you choose not to do public accounting in the long run. And now I do the bean counter, um, and the bean counter has been something that has turned into such a fun experience for me. I'm obviously here today speaking with all of you. I write uh, content over on the blog, the bean counter blog, every week. I do podcasts, videos, and now webinars, send out emails, all about how you can be successful as an accountant. Um, obviously, I only went a certain length throughout the whole accounting career process. So I brought in a bunch of other people that are far more successful than I'll ever be. People that are you know, partners in CPA firms, successful entrepreneurs in the accounting technology space, recruiters, uh, Jeff's been on the podcast. So you can go over there, you know, he, hey, even if you don't like me, you get to you know, this, this uh, webinar and you're like, oh, if I have to listen to another minute of this guy, I can't even handle Andrew. He's just oh, unbearable. Even if you feel that way, the bean counter is still 100% for you because you could just go there and listen to all the other incredible people I have on the podcast and that we talk about, and there is a bunch of great content there as well. We also do resume reviews. I'll take a look at your resume if you're interested. I have courses, um, and I'm going to give away some free stuff at the end of this podcast. I also give some free stuff out every month, whether it's some CPA exam review materials, we give out some of my courses. I'll give out maybe a resume review every once in a while. A lot of fun stuff over there, all stuff that's going to help you in this journey to become a successful accountant. All right, now we're going to get into the meat. The Grand Cuatro. Uh, that means the Big Four in Spanish. My wife's Mexican. She taught me that. So uh, we're going to talk about the Big Four today and how to get hired by the Big Four. I know what worked for me. There are so many different ways you can get in, so many different paths you can take. I cannot possibly cover them on this podcast. And I'm not going to cover the all basic stuff. I'm not going to cover the stuff that you would normally hear on my podcasts or on my, on my uh, webinars every day or on my emails. You can come to the Bean Counter site. And if you're really committed, you know, if I was really committed nowadays, I think about what I would do if the Bean Counter was around. And I probably would start at the front of the blog and I would start reading all the posts until I got to the very end. I'm just that kind of guy. Like when I get something, I just jump in and I do it 100% and I read every single thing. And now, if all this information that I put out there was available, I would have literally gone back and started that. And I can't possibly cover all of the posts I've ever done in a one hour, you know, 20 or 40, 40 minute webinar. We're going to leave some room for questions at the end. I couldn't possibly cover all of that. So go over there and check it out. But today we're going to talk about some very specific things. Now, we're going to do a polling question. And how this works is uh, Jeff's going to pop in a second, he's going to run the poll. But we're going to ask you what you're looking for. How many people are looking for a summer leadership conference? The big four put those on every summer. It's before you do an internship. And then they pick people from that summer leadership conference to do an internship. And those happen in the summer and in the winter at most firms. You can get them some other times, but it's more rare, really summer and winter. January to April is winter. And then a job. You're at the full-time job stage. We're going to do this polling question. It's going to help me guide through the rest of this talk where you're at. So Jeff, if you could go ahead and run that poll, we could get those numbers. Great. We're uh, already uh, running it. We've got 40% voted, Andrew. Um, once I'll give it about 10 more seconds. Once we get 90 or so percent, I'm going to close it and publish it, so you should be able to see the results. Um, yeah, we're at uh, we're about 80%. So I'll give you five more seconds. All righty. Two more. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close it. We're at 85%. Thanks, everybody, for voting. And here we go. I'm going to show the results. 
All right, Andrew. Now tell me, do you see the results? I don't see the results, actually. That's so weird. Um, well, you can go ahead and share them for us. Yeah, I'll just read them off to you. So <clears throat> summer leadership program is 12%. Internship is 30%. And job is 58%. So nice. well over the majority are looking for full-time jobs. Awesome. Awesome. Good to know. Right. And I'll use that sort of as we're going along. That's exciting. You know, a lot of you guys are right there, right on the cusp of your career. And, you know, a lot of people get nervous when they see, oh, you know, the summer leadership, the internship, and the job, and they think, okay, I'm getting to the end of my degree, and I need this job, and I didn't do a summer leadership or an internship. And, and there's this myth that floats around out there that says, oh, you know, everybody uh, that works in the big four goes to the internship program. And that's just not true. In fact, I would say majority of people that are working at the firms today did not do a summer leadership and did not do an internship. So don't get discouraged on yourself. I tell people there's a 555 rule that I tell people. For every 15 people that are working at the big four, five of them you know, did the summer leadership and internship and were always going to work at the firm. The next five graduated university and started full time. Never did an internship, never did a summer leadership. It was their first job out of college. And then the last five of that 15 worked at some other company, you know, maybe a private company, maybe another public accounting firm, and then they transferred into the big four as an experienced hire. So don't get down on yourself. You, you're really, you know, there's tons of opportunities at this point. You know, even if you don't get it at the beginning, you can get it down the road. And I've seen a lot of people do that and be very successful. So don't get down on yourself, and, and we'll use uh, this information going forward to, to make sure we tailor it to most of these people who are looking for a job. So like I said, I'm not going to cover the normal stuff, you know, the, the, the resume, exactly what you should have on the resume. We, we can get to some of that in the questions if you want. The career fair, what you should do. I have a whole ebook on the career fair that talks about every single question you should ask them, everything you need to do to prepare. Same thing with the interviews, and I've got a nice treat for all of you at the end. If you stick around, I'll let you know how to get that ebook. Um, which is all about interviewing. It's got every single question they're going to ask you in these interviews and how you should respond. So stick around to the end of this and you'll find out how you can get that ebook. And I, I want to talk today about three main things. And I want to talk about how these things are components that are used to evaluate you and, and how you can position yourself in the best way. A lot of getting one of these jobs with the big four firms is about positioning. It's not so much about, um, you know, there's one right way. You have to take your story and you have to position it in a way that's going to be compelling in order for them to hire you. And the three main buckets that I look at are GPA, work experience, and leadership experience. We're going to talk about your wow factor at the end and how you can really build one of those up. But I want to focus on these main three. And we're going to sit on this slide for a second before we run this polling question. But I'm curious what you guys think. You know, if you were to go and get a job with the big four and they were to hire you, what do you, what do you think they're looking for the most? Each of these pie charts represents an answer. Maybe they're looking for, if we look at A, 50% of the GPA is, is what's important to them, and then work and leadership is sort of secondary. And B, leadership is the most important, and work and GPA is you know secondary. And C is obviously the other option. So take a second before we run this poll. And look at each of these and think, what do, these, what do you think the big four think is most important? Your GPA, your leadership experience, your work experience? What do you think it is? I'm curious to see what the answer is. So, Jeff, go ahead and run that poll when you can, and let's see what most people think, A, B, or C. A, B, or C, I'm going to launch the poll, and now you can type in or, or enter into the poll selection your answer. Don't type it into your question panel. You should have a poll that pops up. That, sh that you should be able to select. All right, we've already got 85% of the audience. I'm going to close this in five seconds. Nice. All right, and then Andrew, I'm going to tell you. Thanks everybody for voting. We got 90%. What do most people think? All right, so um, I guess you don't see that, but um, I'm going to tell you. So Andrew, 66% of the audience selected B, um, and then 24% selected C. And 10% uh, selected A. So, so overwhelming majority selected B. Now I'm going to hide these results so we can get back to that slide. And now the yeah, so B is back up. Bam. Right, so you're, you're no. Perfect, perfect. Bam. You guys hit the nail on the head. That, I'm so glad you're on the same page. We could just, you know what? Let's just end the webinar right now. I'm done. Everybody already knows what I'm going to say. 
we could just wrap this thing up and you know we can enjoy the rest of the day. I don't know where you guys are, but in Florida it's beautiful, it's sunny, it's like 75 degrees. Now I'm teasing, but you guys are absolutely right. 66% of you said that B is the answer. Leadership ends up being the most important. You know, GPA and it, it's just there are quote minimum requirements, but they're very soft. I mean, I was below the minimum requirements when I got my job at PwC and I ended up working there. Work experience, there's only so much you can do. It's great to have. But the reason why the leadership experience is so important is because of the exposure it gets you day in and day out with people in the profession, accounting firms. You can become people's friends at these accounting firms if you're in the right leadership positions when you're going through this process. Even if you are in your final semester of your undergrad, you can still take advantage and get involved in some leadership activities. Even if you're in your master's program, you can still do it. Absolutely. So I want to we're having some trouble here with the slides. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so in terms of leadership, what am I talking about? Obviously, you guys know it's important. And if you can get into one of these accounting societies, that is the best you can do. Um, NABA, National, National Association of Black Accountants. Uh, Alpha, Association of Latino Finance uh, Professionals in Accounting. I, I think I might have even misspelled that. I always get Alpha messed up. I think there's an F in there. Um, and um, Beta Alpha Psi is a huge one. That's the Honors Accounting Society. I was in that for many years. I was the president for a year. I was the vice president. I also won a couple of national speech competitions in Beta Alpha Psi two years in a row. I did that. And I tell you, I just I was talking, talking with, talking with, talking with all the time. Uh, any other accounting society or association at your school, and also state CPA societies. You know, a lot of these state CPA societies are desperate desperate to reach out to the younger generation, people that are still in, in university. And if you can get any any way you can touch this, any way you can touch any of these organizations, it's totally going to help you in the process of getting hired by the big four. Not just from the resume. You know, putting it on your resume is great. Yeah, it is great. But they only look at the resume for a few seconds. They only look at the resume for a few seconds. So it needs to be formatted correctly. It needs to say the right bullet points. It needs to be easy for them to you know, find the information they're looking for, but after that, how much time are you spending with them? You know, have I been talking with the recruiter from KPMG for the last two years, and you're just rolling up at the career fair this spring? You know, it's going to put you at a disadvantage. You want to get involved with them early on. If you don't have an organization, you, that would be baffling to me that none of these organizations are are near you. You know, you've really got nothing. You've got no state CPA society organization. That, that's not true. Pretty much everybody on the uh, on the webinars from a U.S. college, it, you, you know, if you've got no Beta Alpha Psi chapter, no Alpha or NABA chapter, go ahead and start one. I mean, it's totally a possibility. You get a professor that'll back you. They're very helpful with getting one of these off the ground. And if you are a founding member of one of these organizations, all the more, all, all the better for you when you're going through the process. And you'll be reaching out to the firms from scratch. You'll be the one who's taking the initiative. You'll be the one who's starting the organization. That's exactly the kind of person that they want to hire. You know, I became the vice president of my Beta Alpha Psi chapter in my second semester in Beta Alpha Psi, and I was I was just a sophomore, a second semester sophomore. Actually, I think I won the election my first semester as a sophomore, and I beat out a graduating senior. And so just because you're young, even if you, you think you're too young, you think, oh, I'm not really ready for that job in, in public accounting yet or that internship, don't worry about it. Now's the time to get going. And even if you're further on, last semester, you know, you can still get involved. You can still run a community service event. You can still help organize the career fair, help organize speakers coming on campus, give them the little gift that people give them when speakers come and speak to the Beta Alpha Psi, the Alpha, and the NABA chapters. Whatever you can do to get involved, you've got to get creative. You know, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm too busy, Andrew. I, I hear this all the time. And, you know, you're going to be busy in the big four, like I said it, earlier on. I don't really care that you're busy. You know, you need to, you have to do it and you have to do it now. You know, when I was in university, I had up to four jobs when I was in my undergrad. And in grad school, I just worked one job, but it was 40 hours a week. And I did school, and during my master's, I also was taking the CPA exam. But if you put in the hard work now, you know, it's like anything else, right? You put in the hard work now and you can relax a lot later. The main reason why I was successful at PwC is not because you know I was the hardest working or I was the most smart in accounting. I had nothing to do with that. The biggest thing that helped me was I was much more relaxed than my counterparts who 
you know, felt like, oh my gosh, this is so much work compared to what I was used to in college. And, you know, on top of working in the big four and working all these hours, I have to take the CPA exam because I didn't do that before I started. You have to front load your work in order to be successful in the big four. Because what you guys want, you don't want to just work for the big four. You want to be successful in the big four. You want to work on the best clients. You want to get on these client proposals. You want to be chair of social programs. You want to be leading these events. You don't want to just be you know, the weird one that somehow snuck in. You want to be a top performer with the top bonuses and the top raises. And the way you do it is by front loading and getting all of this experience now and getting it done early. Now I want to talk a little bit about work experience because while it's not my number one thing, leadership is the number one thing you need. Work is work is great too. Work is huge. And any work is, is, is big. Any work is great and can help you. It doesn't have to be accounting related. When, when you're working, you can always use that as an excuse with your GPA. I come, people come to me all the time and they're like, Andrew, I got a low GPA. I think I'm, I can't get the big four. And I say, well, have you been working? They're like, yeah, I've been working full time. And I'm like, well, shoot, you know, you can't be compared against someone who has a 3.95 GPA. Actually, I remember I went to the PwC Summer Leadership Conference and this guy had a 3.99 GPA. And I saw that. The very first person I saw, I saw that on his transcript in his hand and I thought, Oh my gosh, when they find out that I've only got a 3.2, they're going to kick me straight out of here. But GPA is not really as big of a deal as people make it out to be, guys. Look, I, I ended up getting that internship, and he did not. He had a 3.99, I had a 3.2. I won, he lost. I didn't look at it that way until years later, but you know, if you have GPA issues and you've been working, you can use that as an excuse. And that was exactly what I did. I said, yeah, I got a 3.2, but I'm working four jobs, and I'm in beta off assigned leadership positions winning these competitions. I'm working hard. And they will give you the room to be different and to be unique. Even the big four will do that. Accounting work experience is best, and you know the way that I got my jobs back in the university days was I just looked on Craigslist. There's so many jobs on Craigslist for accounting, and you think you're not uh, you know, qualified for them because you haven't finished your degree or anything, that's a bunch of hoots. You know, you got to get on there and you got to apply for any job that's on there. Any job that's in the accounting section on Craigslist, I want you to prepare a really nice cover letter, a really nice resume, and I want you to go on the Bean Counter site. I'm going to share some links with you at the end here, and you'll get some templates that'll tell you exactly what to email these companies to get a 50 to 80 percent response rate. And then based on that response, you know, they'll either call you for a phone interview or maybe an interview uh, in person at their company. You go to Craigslist and you do that, you're going to have a lot of success. And uh, you, at the university you know, board, the, the little uh, board where they post jobs, that was huge for me as well. That's how I managed to get a bunch of my jobs when I was in university and all my internships. And anything you can get will help. It'll help you obviously with cash as well. You might, if you have taken on student loans, you might not have to do as much. But again, front load all of this now. Get that work experience, get it on your resume, get that leadership experience, get it on your resume. And all of this is building up for the final product, which it's really the only way you can, you can, it's not the only way, but it's most of the people that get hired straight out of university into the big four, they've got a little bit of all these categories and they do them all well. It's a well-rounded person with a lot of experience and a unique story. With the GPA, you gotta get creative. Like I said, I had a 3.2, but I got creative. I said I was working, I can't be compared against people that have a 3.8, and they understood that. The other thing most people don't understand is you don't have to put, you know, you don't have to be full disclosure on your GPA. Let's say you have a 3.1 GPA overall, but if you look at your accounting classes, you've got a 3.5. Well, on your resume, I'm not putting anything about a 3.1, I'm putting 3.5. That's what I'm putting. I'm, I'm putting 3.5 accounting GPA. 3.1, I don't even see it. I don't even know where it is. You had a 3.1? Nobody knew that. So I didn't include that on a resume if it was better for me. And the way I looked at accounting classes was I even drilled it down further. I said, you know, what's better for Andrew? Is it better to put my accounting classes or is it better to put all the classes that I have that are related to the CPA exam? And I, I sort of toyed between those two. And I, and I tried to figure out which one would be better if it was all the ones for the CPA exam. Like, for example, business law is required, right? I throw that on there. I, I got an A in that. Bam, a GPA is a 3.6. And that was what was on the face of the resume. Now, once they dig down, they ask for your transcripts, and they realize, oh, you know, Andrew's got a 3.1. He doesn't have a 3.6. Most of the time, they never ask questions, and I work with people on this all the time. But if they do ask questions, you're going to be prepared to send them a one-page memo showing them your calculation and your rationale. And you know they didn't even ask me about it at all. 
and because it's not lying, it's the truth. That was my accounting GPA, and I calculated it using all of my CPA uh, credit classes. And by the time they got my transcripts, you know, they already loved me. I was already coming in for an interview. They were so excited about me. Oh, they're all talking about me, and the transcripts are just like, ah, it's, it's you know, he's not like failing. So let's just move forward. Once you get in the door, everything that was on your resume, it's all sort of in the past. It's not as important as the connections you're making with everybody in the moment. So get creative on your GPA. If you have a low undergrad GPA, I've literally seen people with 2.7, 2.8 undergrad GPA. I mean, just real hemorrhaging that occurred. I don't know what was going on. You know, I partied a lot freshman year, but these kids never stopped, okay? And, and they went on through their whole career. Undergrad got a 2.8, 2.7, whatever. You can go back for a master's degree. If it makes sense on your situation, and I've got a nice post over on the Bean Counter blog right now about that, but if it makes sense for your situation to go and get a master's degree in accounting, and you can get your GPA up to 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 in the masters. You put that as the headline number. You know, the GPA, it's sort of like the jobs numbers that come out for the economy. I don't know if anybody ever looks at those, but you know, they say, oh, 250,000 jobs created, you know. But if you look at those jobs, a lot of them are, you know, everybody's working at McDonald's, right? But nobody cares about that. There's like, oh, 250,000, it's a huge number. GPA, 3.6, it's a huge number. Under the details, I had a 2.8 in undergrad. Nobody really looks at that. And you don't want to lie here. There's absolutely no lying that can go on. You're just choosing what information to put on your resume. Now, at the end of the day, if you have over a 3.4 GPA overall and accounting, there's going to be no questions. Just put that on your resume. Forget about your GPA and move on and work 100% on leadership. Work 100% on, on getting work experience. And, um, yeah, just you know, spend a little bit less time you know, cooking the books and move on. You know, when you start working, I had somebody ask me this the other day, when you start working, nobody cares about your GPA anymore. It's just like when you were in college, nobody cared about your, your high school grades. I mean, I don't even remember what my high school grades were. I don't even remember my undergrad GPA anymore. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. 3.23, I said that. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, but I don't remember my, uh, my high school anymore. And, and it ends up being the same thing. Nobody asks once you start your first job. So remember, Focus on the leadership. That's going to be the, the best thing for you. It's going to be the way to get that face time with these firms. All of the big four are trying to get involved on campuses. They're trying to get out and reach out to these organizations or these chapters. Get involved. Ask them. Offer to do things for free. You don't even need a position in these organizations. Just offer to help out in any way you can. They're planning an event. Just ask them to show up early. Ask them if you can help. Ask them if you can help plan. Ask them if you can carpool. Whatever you can do to get your foot in the door in the organization, next thing you know, you'll be talking to these firms all the time. So I'm going to speed this up a bit. We need to talk about your wow factor. This is going to be your story. And this is even more important than those three categories from before. Now those three categories, everybody knows you need, to need a little bit of both of those. Now we all know, and you guys knew at the beginning, the leadership is most important. But, but what's really going to close the deal is going to be your story. I'm going to share with you some stories of some really incredible people that I've met since I've started the bean counter and even back when I was in Beta Alpha Psi. One of the guys I met, his name was Hector, and he was a ballet dancer. Interesting for a, for a guy to be a ballet dancer first off. And he had an incredible story where he was originally from Cuba, and he was in the Cuban National Ballet. I mean, this guy was legit, and he was great. And he escaped from Cuba, made it to the United States, I think in his teenage years, and ended up teaching ballet in the U.S., and then he was doing that while he was in school and sort of paying his way through college. And he just had an incredible story, right? Escaped from Cuba, right? And in his mind, he sort of talked about it like he was escaping this, you know, regime. And I'm not getting into politics here. I'm just telling you from the guy who was there in the trenches what he was saying. It was really incredible to watch that and to see him tell his story about coming to another country and escaping, you know, an oppressive uh, world. I mean, he used to say that when he was uh, – when he was uh, in Cuba, he would get on the internet sometimes, which was illegal, and he would look up things, and he would learn things, and that's what spurred his interest to finally escape. Interesting story. You're not going to forget that guy if you're out at a dinner or if somehow he works that into the career fair or some social or networking event. You're not going to forget Hector. He has a wow factor. You know, another woman named Gina had a terrible, terrible tragedy. Her parents were killed in a hurricane. And she was also from another country, and she came to the United States after that, and she won an award for her incredible achievements in the face of adversity. 
Um, it was through one of these accounting organizations. She made it to the U.S. after all of this strife. Her hometown had been decimated. Her parents had been killed in this hurricane. And here she was, a successful accounting student, looking at a Big Four opportunity. And she did end up working for a Big Four. Just an incredible woman and someone who just had that glow and that aura about them. And that is, I would say, the thing that when I talk to partners at CPA firms, the big four CPA firms, that's what they say. They say they want someone with a unique and a compelling story. And we're going to get to how you can create your own in a second because, you know, obviously not everybody's a ballet dancer that escaped from Cuba. And not everybody's parents passed away. Those are tra That's a tragedy, and you know, it's not something that you have to have. You don't have to have a tragedy aspect to your story, but you need to find something. I'll give you an example of what I did. You know, I, I went to boarding school for two years in Costa Rica. I spoke Spanish, and that was an interesting thing, but it was a little bit long in the past. It was in high school, so it wasn't really as relevant. So I said, you know, I need to do something to stand out. I need to do something that's going to make me, you know, really get this wow factor, get this story that no one can forget. And so I, I, I said, I'm going to get involved in Beta Alpha Psi. I'm going to become the president, and I did just that. And I won the, this Beta Alpha Psi Deloitte Best Practices Speech Competition two years in a row. Me and a couple of other students from the organization put together this – we entered this competition, put together these presentations. We won regional competitions, and then we traveled to national competitions, and we won two years in a row. I don't – I still to this day don't know anybody else that's done that. There could be. I hope to meet someone that does three or four. I hope somebody does, but that was something that made me unique. I just crushed it in those speech competitions, and I just crushed it in Beta Alpha Psi. Our chapter went from 25 people to 80 people. I think we had about $8,000 in revenue when I started, and we went to about $35,000 in revenue by the end. So. I made myself unique. I didn't have a story that I could really use. The Costa Rica thing didn't really wasn't really working out, and so I went ahead and said, I just need to crush it with this beta alpha side chapter, and that was huge for me. I was also working four jobs during that whole time and holding up a meager 3.2 GPA. So if you now I need you to think about your story. You know, best case scenario, you already have one. You're like, bam, he's talking about this. It's connecting with me. I know what my story is. I know what I've done. I know what I'm going to be able to pitch to these firms. And if you don't have one, you make one. There, there really are no excuses. There are so many different ways to make one. You know, I told you about mine. There's another example I'll tell you right now about this guy named Eric. Eric was a very interesting guy. You know, I, I joke with people. He was like the most interesting man. You know, he had the fair that I still can't grow. I'm like 25 years old this month, and I can't grow like you know, just a short and little short and curlies. All right, that's a little strange to share on a webinar. Uh, but you know, I, I can't grow a lot of facial hair. This guy had the nice, you know, thick bush, just like the guy from, um, uh, you know, those Dos Equis commercials. And he was a world traveler. He'd been all around. You know, he'd been all over. He'd been to Southeast Asia, Africa, Latin America, you know, all these places. And he was a skydiver, just like an interesting guy. And you just looked at him, and you were like, "Yeah, oh, wow, this guy's just got an interesting stories to tell all the time." And you know. Is that the most important thing for you to to be in, in accounting? No, it's not. Is it, okay? You know, you were skydiving. You know, what what does that have to do with you know you know client relations, tying out work papers? Yeah, you can make some connections, but it's not going to be a direct hit. But it doesn't matter that it wasn't really this. You know, I say not real, as in it wasn't like really valuable for his career. It was just a story that caught people's attention. Eric was the thing, man. Eric was the skydiver. Eric was the traveler. And people remembered him because of that. They wanted to be around him. And if I was an accounting firm, I'd have been proud to send Eric out to the client because I know they would like him. I know they'd work well with him. He had the other boxes ticked. He had the other boxes ticked. You know, he was in beta office psi, had a great GPA, had a little bit of work experience, and a compelling story, a wow factor. Okay, so you know you need you know to focus on leadership. You need to hit some of those other areas as well that work experience that GPA. You need to focus on your wow factor, and if any of you are having trouble with that, you shoot me an email anytime, Andrew at TheBeanCounter.com. I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Now I want to talk about the biggest pitfall I see people when they are going through this process because you can have everything I mentioned before. I'm going to talk about a guy did in a second. But if you are not prepared, if you're not ready for every single thing that you do to be watched and analyzed, you know, the big four, they don't like to say it. They don't like to say that they are – you know, literally in some 1984-esque thing trying to get cameras on you to watch you 24-7. I mean they don't literally do that, right? They don't get a camera on you, but they have people that take you to these events. they got 20 in the firm. Every single person's talking to you. Everything's looking at you, and if anyone has a complaint, boom, you're out. I remember 
when I went to the summer leadership conference of PwC, this one guy there, he just, I don't know what happened. This guy that had the 3.99 GPA, he just started kicking back these beers. And, you know, before you know it, kid had six, seven beers. Now, he wasn't, you know, loud and belligerent, but he was sort of like, he was one of those people that gets, you know, has a couple too many and then ends up in the corner quiet and depressed. Right? And I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know, this kid, I felt so bad for him. Um, and he ended up not getting the job, and that he dealt with that anxiety watched every single second by drinking and ending up in the corner. And I know that's an extreme example, but you need to be prepared to handle that pressure. And I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm telling you this because it's just true. You have to be ready to handle that, and it is stressful. I've got an interview with a Deloitte recruiter. She's an ex-Deloitte recruiter. It's in it's in the, the course, Get Hired by Big Four Firms. You can check that out at thebeancounter.com slash course. And I interview her and ask her about all the things. And when you hear that interview, you hear her talk about how she looked at these students, and you start to see exactly what I'm saying. She was watching every single thing. I'll tell you the story of my friend Pat, and this is the biggest problem. It just goes back to not being able to handle that pressure, not being able to stick into the very last second. Pat was a good friend of mine. We were buddies. We were sort of shoulder to shoulder throughout our accounting degrees. We, you know, we were in Beta Alpha Psi together. We took classes together. He was actually on the leadership committee with me, Beta Alpha Psi, and we both wanted to work together at the same firm. We both wanted to work at PwC. I went ahead and did the summer leadership, got my internship, and I was at the internship. I kid you not. And this guy did everything right. And when I was at the internship, I was told that he had an offer. The recruiter said, Andrew, I'm so happy you're here. We're so excited for you to accept your offer, and we're so excited to have Pat as well. He's had one more you know, event coming up. He had to go through his final interviews, but she already knew he had it in the bag. Uh, right before his final interviews, I told Pat, I said, you know, you've got this thing in the bag, man. And I heard from the recruiter that you're going to be in, we're going to be in, working here together, this is going to be great. But during those final interviews, Pat slipped up a bit. He got a little bit complacent. He thought it was over. He thought it was done. I told him it was done. The recruiter told me it was done. But after everybody liked him, all it took was the very last day in the whole process, the final interviews. At the end, they took him out to lunch. He sat down at lunch, and the lunch went about an hour and a half. There was another candidate or two there along with some people from the firm. And the people from the firm came back and said, yeah, you know, we just weren't impressed with Pat. Like He just didn't have a lot to say, didn't seem very interested, didn't seem like he wanted to be there. And yeah, we just weren't interested in him. That little tiny slip up at the very end cost him an entire future of working at that firm. And he had to, ended up going to another firm. He ended up going to his second pick instead of his first pick because he just let it slip at the end. They're watching you till the very end. Even though he did know everything, he knew everything about the firm. I told him all about my experience and my internship and everything. He probably felt like he did know everything. But you need to keep going to the very last second, and you need to realize that they're watching you all the time. If you want to learn more about all these accounting firms, you got to go check out the beancounter.com slash accounting dash firms. I cover all of the top 25 CPA firms in detail, salary, uh, information about the firm, their location. You know, so you can figure out where they are near your city, where they all have offices. I've got recruiter contacts. I actually got a message from a recruiter literally just last week. This is the national recruiter for CBiz. She said, Andrew, I love what you're doing. Genius. Could you add me as the key recruiter for CBiz? I'm national experienced in campus. Thank you. And you know, this is so cool because what this shows me is she wants you on this webinar right now to go over to the page, counting firms on the Bean Counter site, look up CBiz and reach out to her and start talking to her. Send her your resume, send her your cover letter. Ask her about how you can get involved with CBiz on campus. Ask, them about, ask her when they'll be on your campus next. She wants you to reach out to her. She is the number one person at CBiz for recruiting. I mean, Accounting Fly is a fantastic resource. You should use that too. You should go to all the resources that are available. You should go to your, your local, you know, at, at your school, you should go to the career fair. You should go to the career center. You should use Beta Alpha Psi. You should use the Bean Counter site. Go check this out, thebeancounter.com slash accounting dash firms. Now quickly, the next steps for you. I want you to go to the Bean Counter site, and I want you to sign up for my mailing list. I talk about all of this stuff all the time. I'm going to go through this quickly. I talk about resume, tics, resume tips. I talk about critiquing resumes. I'll get videos that I'll go ahead and post of me tearing apart someone's resume and saying everything that needs to get better with it. I, and then I create the better version, and I give it to that person. 
I, I have a career fair guide that tells you everything you need to do at the career fair, all the questions you need to ask, what it's like going uh, you know, and walking up to these people, and what should be in your mind, how your face should look, what clothes you should wear, how your shoulders should be you know, organized. I've got email templates of exactly what to send to these firms to try and get an interview or to get a meeting. All the interview questions and answers that you'll be asked throughout the entire office visit, interviews with professionals, interviews with firm HR. I've got a great one on there uh, coming out in the next few weeks with Moss Adams where we're going to be going through everything that they are looking for throughout each stage of the process in candidates. CPA exam advice, CPA exam passing tips, how to get promoted in public accounting. I did that myself. I've got a lot of things to say about that. How to find any accounting job, not just the big four, not just public accounting. How to find purpose and meaning in what you do. It's so important. That was the reason I was successful at PwC. That's the reason I'm successful at the bean counter because I really genuinely love what I'm doing. And as soon as I stop loving what I'm doing, I quit it and I move on. And I advise you to do the same. Alternative accounting careers, obviously look at me. I'm doing the bean counter. I've got another company that I run as well, 10 Key Heroes. I do things differently in accounting. You know, That's not for everyone. But if you're interested in that, I do cover a lot of information about that. The transition from being a student to being a professional, oh, it is so stressful. I remember when my first couple days of the internship, I was freaking out. Um, and I talk about how you can handle that with grace and style, how to find summer leadership adventures, and so much more. Before we wrap this up, anybody that wants this ebook, it's about a 45 page ebook, 50 page ebook, the accounting interview, dress, office visits, interview questions, and more, just send me an email, andrew at thebeancounter.com. You send me an email and you just say interview ebook and I'll email it right back to you. You'll get it within 24 hours. You can take a second now if you want. You can open up your little, you know, your little Gmail, your your email. You send me an email, Andrew at thebeancounter.com, interview ebook. You can just put that in the in the subject. You don't need to say anything else. And I'd be more than happy to shoot that over. This thing is huge. Interviews are coming up this semester. This will get you prepared. Every question they're going to ask you, every single response, and I'll give it to you for free. This is normally part of the courses, which costs, you know. 200 to 400 dollars, but I'm giving this this away for free today. So go ahead and email me right now. And the last thing is other things that you can get involved with on the bean counter. Uh, you know, I do resume reviews, mock interviews. You know, and people ask me, you know, Andrew, you charge you know a couple hundred dollars to do all these things. It's like, yeah, I do charge a couple hundred dollars to do all these things. I give some really valuable advice in my resume reviews. I've done so, I've done hundreds. I've looked at hundreds of these resumes now. I know what they need top to bottom. I know once I get to know your story, once I have a call with you and get to know what your situation is, I help position you in a way where bam, you know, th this is going to be the best resume for you. We're going to link that up with your wow factor. And we're going to put you in the best position to get one of these jobs, whatever, whichever kind of job that may be. I also do mock interviews with people and I've got four courses now. These courses are amazing. I'm so proud of them. Uh, get hired by big four accounting firms. That is my premier course. That's the one I've had around for the longest. That thing is a beast. It's, it's just full of so much good information. Three other courses, create a flawless accounting resume, how to get any accounting job in three months or less, rock the accounting interview, five part series. You can email me at andrew at thebeancounter.com if you are interested in any of those. And I've had so much fun on this webinar today, and I'm so excited, Jeff, that we're going to take a couple minutes to ask questions. And if we want to go a couple yeah. minutes over, you know, I can if that's all right with you. Let's do it. You know, we've got we've got nearly 200 people on the webinar, Andrew, and let's um, work through a couple questions. Um, and Andrew, I'm getting feedback on your end, so let, let's do this. While I'm asking a question, if you'll hit mute. Okay. Perfect. Okay, will that work? And then I'm going to get you back in. Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, here, here's the here's the thing I keep hearing, Andrew, and I, I keep hearing feedback uh, from myself. So I don't know where that's coming from. I'll try to get on the phone here. Andrew, um, uh, one of the questions that I've heard more often than not is, and I'm going to try to summarize it in one big theme is. What if the Big Four doesn't come to my school? Come to my school, and I wonder if you interview with the Big Four at University of Tampa, or if you accessed the Big Four non-traditionally. And, and, and even if you didn't, one of the questions that we keep getting is, "What if they don't go to my school? You know, what do I do now?" Great question. Giving, great, great okay. question. And I, I, I love that question because I actually went through it myself, and that's I ended up working at PwC. Like I said before, one Big Four firm recruited at the University of Tampa, Deloitte. I do not work for Deloitte. I never worked for Deloitte. I actually interviewed with Deloitte. They turned me down. So what? You know, they're the one firm at my school. I want to work for the Big Four. They turned me down. Am I just supposed to pack up, go home? No. And there are a bunch of ways you can do it. You know, I mentioned getting involved in leadership, but I'll tell you my story just to give you an example. There was a you know, event going on at our university with the local business community. I didn't even go to it. 
another woman from my Beta Alpha Psi chapter went to that event, and she met someone and just started a conversation with them. And they were asking about her, and she's in this accounting organization, and she's representing them at this event. And they said, you know, I, um, I know this woman from PwC. Uh, would you be interested in meeting them? She said, yeah, that'd be great. She got the guy's business card. She followed up and said, hey, I know you mentioned that person at PwC. Would you be interested in uh, connecting me with them? And they said, absolutely. That person's name is you know, blank, 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 and that ended up being the recruiter for the local office. That woman was you know, already got her job, was getting ready to leave Beta Alpha Psi, and she just forwarded me that email. Nobody had ever talked with you know, this person from PwC, and I cold sent that person from PwC an email. And I said, hey, you know, my name is Andrew. I'm here at the University of Tampa, and I am involved in the Beta Alpha Psi chapter here. At that time, I think I was a VP, and I would love to get together with you over a cup of coffee to talk about you know, any opportunities that might be available for PwC to work with our school. She ended up responding almost immediately. We went to coffee the next week, and from there, that's how I got connected with the firm. You know, and I ended up sneaking into the career fair later on, building further relationship with that firm as well as a bunch of other firms. So there's two two main things I would say. First, figure get involved with these leadership activities, get involved with the community, and if that doesn't work, just cold email the company. Call, find out who the local recruiter is. If you go to that beancounter.com slash accounting dash firms, you'll see information on how to find any recruiter's email address and exactly what to say to get them to respond. Look at that template. Send the local HR, the closest office to you, an email, and you know if you're not you know, VP, beta off side, whatever, ask them to get a cup of coffee and discuss the opportunities available with the firm. I think you'll be surprised what happens. Um, so email them directly or go ahead and sneak into a career fair. You, know, you, you're, you go to a small school, the big four doesn't recruit there, no big deal. You can sneak into a career fair right down the road. But those are really the two things that I did, um, but I – you know. The Bean Counter was started because I don't want people to feel like they're victims, like they can't do anything, like they're 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 just they need to succumb to their circumstances. You know, there are so many options available to you nowadays with the internet, with things like the Bean Counter, with things like Accounting Fly, that you know, them coming to your university and going to the career fair, everybody's doing that. You need to look outside the box and think about other ways that you can reach out to these firms. Totally agree. I, Andrew, I, I think that pursuing the employer is is an underrated skill, and it, it shows an incredible amount of assertiveness. Cold calls, cold emails, find a way to get in front of somebody. Got to do it. Andrew, the, the second largest group of questions that we had is about, I'm an international student, um, and how do I fit into the big four picture? I know you get this question a lot, so can you talk about that? You are right on the right track. The big four is where you're probably going to get your best opportunity to get sponsored with a visa. Now, I don't care if you meet someone from the big four and they say, oh, we don't sponsor people with a visa. That's just not true. I know multiple people that work for each of the big four firms that have been sponsored with a visa. Sometimes some people say that because they work in a small office or whatever, but it, it, it's, it's not true. All of the firms do sponsor someone, and they sponsor people that they really, really like. So… What you need to do is go through the normal process, and for some, you know, what I tell people that are from other countries is you need to focus more on the big four than the other accounting firms because you have the best chance of getting sponsored with the big four. Other than that, the process is exactly the same. You, know, you, you may not be able to get as much work experience because of your visa restrictions, but you can volunteer in VITA, volunteer income tax assistant to get some accounting experience that way. You can volunteer uh, for some other maybe not-for-profit organizations and help out with their accounting just to get that on your resume. But other than the visa, it's the exact same process. Now, you need to be willing to – you need to be a little bit more tenacious, and if I were in your shoes, I would look at maybe two or three cities as opposed to just you know the city that I currently live in. I would say, okay, let's say I live in Dallas. I also will look for a position in Atlanta, and I'll also look for a position in San Francisco, and I'll directly reach out to those offices of the big four with my cover letter and resume and ask for opportunities. And don't just say I'm willing to take you – know, I'm going to harp on this for a second longer. A lot of people think if I say, oh, you know, I'll work in any office, and um, you know, I don't care which city, and I don't even care if it's auditor tax. I just want to work for the big four. Uh, terrible, terrible thing to say. They want people that know what they want, audit, tax, consulting, and where they want to work. 
because when they put you there, they want it to be part of your choice. If they just send you to Atlanta and you can't stand Atlanta and they put you in tax and you're like, I need to do consulting, that's a bummer. They want you to know what you want up front. So the more specific you can be about the cities and the more specific you can be about the line of service, the better chance you'll get. And that's for everybody, not just international students. Muted. Jeff, are we still on? Yeah, Andrew, sorry. I, I uh, had it on mute so you didn't hear the feedback. Sorry. sorry. No worries. What's the subject line I need to put in the email to get the ebook? Just interview ebook. All right, great. All right, great. All right, all right. Andrew, I'm going to mute you for just a second because I'm getting some feedback. But um, what, what I wanted to say is we have an absolute ton of questions, and, um, but, but the, probably 30% of them cover the, 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 first, um, the first one. Andrew, this is the, the last question I'll ask, and then I'll, I'll give everybody instructions on how to get the rest of their questions answered. But tell us about um, how you, they can access your courses. I got that a, a couple of times, and I want everybody to make sure they understand how to connect with your courses. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, the best way is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and close this and show you a little bit here. The best way, uh, can, you, can you see my screen, Jeff, where I'm actually on the bean counter site? Well, I think you might be muted, but I, yeah, I think yeah, you yeah. guys Yeah, Andrew, I've got it. it. You're on. Yeah, I think you guys can see it. Right over here, this is where in the shop section across the top is where I keep all the courses, and this is where you can reach out to me for resume, resume services, mock interviews. Uh, this is really going to be the place to start, and the reason I say that, you know, this is where you can find out what's in each of these courses. All of them are a little bit different. The biggest and the best one for people in this webinar is going to be get hired by the big four firms. If you're interested in a deal or a special, you can go ahead and email me directly. Tell me what you're interested in. If you're doubting, you know, going between two, you know, you shoot me an email. We'll, we'll try and work something out. I do also give these away from time to time on our Facebook page at the Bean Counter or at Facebook.com slash the Bean Counter. I do give away uh, you know, some of the courses on a monthly basis. So you can go over there and you can check it out. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of different ways that you can get it. Um, but that's the main the main two ways on the site, email me or on the Facebook page when we do giveaways every month. These are and yeah, just to be more specific, these are paid courses. So I do give them away for free every once in a while, but they are paid courses. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, Andrew, I'm going to mute you for one more second. So, um, so everyone, thanks for being on the call today. I'm going to let Andrew have the last word, but um, I want to reiterate that if you do not get a question answered, and I knew there would be a lot, I've, I've sent everyone Andrew's email address. That's andrew at the beancounter.com. Um, feel free to ask him your questions. I'm sorry that we couldn't get to every question, but on the other hand, we, we tried to prioritize the questions based on the, the number that came in. If you want the ebook, um, just email Andrew and uh, in the subject line put the ebook. I've also got um, that sent you through the chat panel the URL that you'll need to click on to access the top 25 firms that Andrew did. It's an incredible resource, and um, and we're. What a great ally to have here in the accounting space, and Andrew, and and certainly going to be one of the more probably the most popular session you've had all week. So um, this is a blast, Andrew. We're going to do this again because um, I think the audience is hungry for more information. I think we're going to get a lot of questions that we could probably tee up for even more blogs um, and and webinars in the future. So Andrew, I'm going to let you have the final say here, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody. But um, before we do, Andrew, I just want to say thank you very very much for being a part of this today. Yeah, Jeff, thanks for having me on. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, the last thing I'll say is just, you know, I, I already mentioned it a little bit before, but, you know, working, getting a job with the big four, it, it is tough. Yeah, they do hire a lot of people, but so many people want one of these opportunities. They want one of these jobs. And so you have to figure out what you are going to do to be unique, to be different, to stand out from the crowd. You need to work on that wow factor. You need to make sure you get that baseline of leadership, work experience, and GPA. But the biggest thing right now today at 3 o'clock that you can do is just realize that you're not – you don't need to be a victim of circumstance. You know, yeah, maybe not at your school. Yeah, you might have a lower GPA. Yeah, you might not have the best resume or whatever. You know, you're coming here, so you're doing the right thing. You're getting involved online. You're learning more about accounting. You know, you're sending me questions right here. You're sending me questions in my email. 
keep trying something different, keep doing something that is unique and out of the box. You know, like you said, there's about 200 people on this webinar today. There's thousands of accountants all across the United States. So I know that you guys are willing to do something different. You just need to find out what it's going to be for you that's going to stand out and make you stand out in the crowd when you're going through the recruiting process. Again, Andrew at TheBeanCounter.com. If you have any questions at all, anytime now or in the future, I look forward to answering those either personally through email or on the blog. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, it was great today, and I hope that we'll be able to do it again. Jeff, thank you, too. Everybody say thanks, Jeff. If you're still here, you can go ahead and thank him again in the question box because um, it <laughs> takes a lot of work, and uh, I hope we can do it again soon, Jeff. Well, a lot of people are saying thanks to you, Andrew. Great job. Great job. This was awesome, and, and bye for now, okay? Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon.